Is Malik Willis or Will Levis the Tennessee Titans quarterback of the future? My answer is neither. We'll talk about that on today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Let's get it. You are Locked on Titans, your daily Tennessee Titans podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Titans podcast. I am your host, Tyler Rowland, Titans fans. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. It is a mailbag episode of the Locked On Titans podcast. I'm answering your questions to end the week here. Going to talk about who the Titans quarterback of the future is. Are they on the roster? I don't think so. Where does Derrick Henry rank in the Mount Rushmore of Tennessee Titans running backs? And what's the difference between 2019 team, the 2019 team and now? I'll explain all of that while I answer your questions before we get into it. Thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day. Shout out to my everydayers out there. Tomorrow, or not tomorrow, but next week, it's back to a game week. So make sure that you stay locked in to the Locked on Titans podcast. But I got a ton of questions. I'm going to start flying through them here. You guys send in such great questions every single week. But the very first question that we have here comes from my guy, Garrett Garcia. And he says, do you believe the Titans quarterback of the future is already on the roster? Will they have to try again, either via trade or draft? Look, guys, every time I have an opinion or a feeling that is negative for the Tennessee Titans. I don't think something's going to work out. I don't think they made the right decision. I don't think they're going to win. I always hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I can come back and all of you guys can tell me how wrong I was because I would rather the good thing happen for the Titans. But I've been a Tennessee Titans fan for 25 years now. And I'm sorry, but through the beatings, I have lost my morale and I just don't expect, I can't expect good things to happen to the team at this point. And with that in mind, I just don't believe that Will Levis or Malik Willis are the future at quarterback for the Titans. When the Titans get a superstar quarterback, it will not be anyone who is on the team right now. Look, I think Malik has already shown it's going to take way too much development, and he he would need way too much time to ever be a competent NFL starter, and he definitely can't be elite. Um, And then Levis, I think if he was good enough, he would be playing already. And if he is good enough and he's not playing – Well, then we have conversations about Mike Vrabel, but I don't think Will Levis or Malik Willis are the quarterback that gets the Titans to a Super Bowl. I just don't. So, hope that I'm wrong, though. Uh, Moving forward, AJ Madness had a good question. I'm going to find you here, AJ, in just a moment. AJ Madness says, uh, is playing Will Levis a good or a bad idea? Uh, Basically talking about the offensive line, Yeah, AJ says, do you think putting Levis in is a good or a bad thing, knowing how bad everyone on offense has been? AJ, my opinion is going to stay the same. It will always be the same. If playing football makes you worse at football, you weren't the answer anyways. Play the rookie. Let him take his lumps. Let him see defenses. Let him learn. I don't agree with the ruin the confidence thing. I simply don't believe in it. If you're going to be a great NFL player, Playing football isn't going to ruin your confidence. I I don't care. C.J. Stroud is dicing up the league right now with third-string offensive linemen for the majority of the season. Put the kid out there. I don't care. Um, Next question comes from Child of God. And uh, says, you guys sent in 30 questions. So just trying to make sure I find them and read them properly for you. Uh, Child of God (laughs) said, uh, do you think Will Levis can beat Ryan Tannehill at being the starter? Not this year, no. In 2023 as a rookie, I don't think that Will Levis is better 
than Ryan Tannehill. But next year in 2024, when Tannehill is 36 years old, I do think that Will Levis will be a better player than Ryan Tannehill next year. Uh, Kubnik makes a good point here, and a lot of you guys ask questions like this, but depending on if Hopkins is willing, how much value is there in keeping him to help the young quarterback develop? I, it's all about if Hopkins is willing because Hopkins came to the Titans as a late season free agent and the Titans need to do what's in the best interest of Hopkins as well as themselves. If Hopkins is okay to stay and willing to play with Will Levis or willing to play with Malik Willis, whoever, then sure you keep Hopkins. But I think that Hopkins would probably rather go play with a veteran quarterback on a team that's trying to win a Super Bowl. And I think what's and you don't want Hopkins to tell other people, man, the Titans weren't winning. They lied to me. They screwed me. They could have traded me. They made me stay. It was terrible. You don't want that either. So if Hopkins wants to go and you can get value for him, it's best to let him go, regardless of anything else, because it matters how people view you view the team in the future. Um, next question comes from uh, Titan Shaman, and it's a very similar question. Um, it's just you know you keep. Derrick Henry, you you keep Ryan or DeAndre Hopkins. He says Kelly's offense is showing promise. He's figuring out play calling. I agree. Trading away D Hop and Henry massively downgrades the offense and would hinder quarterback development. I'd like to see Levis with a full group of weapons. Thoughts? Look, that's why I'm interested to see one of these young quarterbacks against the Falcons because if they look good, then the Titans are three and four keep playing the young quarterback that played well, and let's see what the team can do. Because the whole point is, next year you're going to have that young guy anyway. So I understand your philosophy there, but I, I want to see what happens in that game against Atlanta. I think that's going to make uh, make a big difference here. But the last question that I have here for our first part of our discussion, it comes from uh, Wilmhelm, and his question is about the chances that Derrick Henry actually gets traded. For me, guys, it's like 10-15%. I don't think it's likely that Derrick Henry is going to get traded. Um, I don't think it's something that's really going to happen. It's possible, but I don't think that it's something that's really going to happen. But with that being said, again, you guys have so many great questions. We're going to talk about why teams don't tank in the NFL, where Derrick Henry ranks in my Mount Rushmore of Tennessee Titans running backs. Also, what's the difference between 2019's 2-4 and four and this year's? Two and four. I'm going to get into all of that. Before I do, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by the Jace case. All right, guys. Here's the reality. You do not want to get caught in a situation where you are unprepared during the unexpected. That's why you need the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use. All it takes to get the Jace case is fill out a simple online form and in some cases jump on a quick call with a board-certified physician. You get ongoing care from their physicians at Jace Medical on any treatment-related questions. It's doctor-created. It's doctor-recommended. Again, the Jace case, five life-saving antibiotics that can help you deal with the uncertainty that's in the world today. I mean, there's natural disasters and and issues all over the place that can lead to supply chain shortages on medication. It can make it impossible for you to get medication in a timely manner. That's why the Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that, again, contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can customize your case and add on other medications for other needs. It's absolutely fantastic. And right now, you can get a gift card so you can share the wonders of Jace Medical in the Jace case with your family and your loved ones. Go to jacemedical.com, enter the code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code Locked On, L O C K E D O N, at Jace Medical, J A S E, medical.com. Also want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. They have everything from spreads, player props, 
over unders. I love single game parlays. You can do a little Derrick Henry over 50 yards. <coughs> DeAndre Hopkins, four catches. Ryan Tannehill, two interceptions. Whatever. You know, I just love combining a couple of things. You can bet a little to win a lot. It's fantastic. So make sure that you visit FanDuel dot com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season right FanDuel official partner of the NFL Titans fans let's continue a mailbag edition of the Locked on Titans podcast, answering your guys' questions. We just talked a ton about the quarterback situation. Now I want to kind of move into an overall look of the franchise, talk a little bit about Derrick Henry as well, but a lot of you guys ask questions about ownership, Vrabel, tanking, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm going to get into all that. Before I do, I do want to thank you guys for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day. Remember, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed. It's your team every day here on the Locked on Titans podcast. But the first question here that I have for you in our second segment is from uh, 420 Hurley Bird. I'm not going to say your other name on the show. But uh, why can't this franchise be realistic about themselves? I feel like for the longest time, a lot of our success has been a product of a weak division. Well, listen, I don't think you're wrong. I think playing in the AFC South absolutely has aided this Tennessee Titans run. And if we want to be even more honest, if you guys are ready for this conversation, if not for Andrew Luck having one of the most surprising retirements in NFL history, none of this probably happens. The Titans never beat Andrew Luck, and they might not have because Ryan Tannehill wouldn't have been the best quarterback in the division. You know what I mean? So, Titans should count their lucky stars there where they're at, but I, I, I think a lot of it, and Joseph Serino, when, uh, or uh, Savarino says, will the Titans ever not make me uh, have gray hair and my hair fall out? Uh, probably not, Joseph. That'll probably never happen, I got to tell you. But honestly, to me, with the state of the Titans franchise, they simply can't afford to, I guess, tank like a lot of us want them to. Think about it from a business standpoint. The Titans don't have the strongest grip on the market anyway. Like, people in Tennessee care way more about the Tennessee Volves than they do the Titans. That's why a lot of the time over this run, other fan bases were just as prevalent at Nissan Stadium as the Titans fans, even though the Titans have been good the last few years. Because the Titans market just simply doesn't care about the Titans as much as other markets care about their team. That's just the truth here. Okay? So, the Titans can't afford to be bad. Or they're going to lose faith in their customers, lose faith very quickly. Let's just call it what it is. The Titans don't have a die-hard fan base. Like, overall, there are die-hard fans. I mean, look at me. You know what I mean? Look at a lot of you guys. There are diehard fans, but as a fan, the Titans aren't the Steelers. The Titans aren't the Eagles. The Titans aren't the Patriots. The Titans aren't even like the Raiders. You know what I mean? The San Francisco 49ers, the Dallas Cowboys. The Titans fan base ain't like that, you know? So I think the reality is ownership cannot afford to let it be known that the team isn't trying to win or to make it appear as if the team isn't trying to win because they'll lose the fan base immediately. And that's just the reality of the Tennessee Titans situation. Hopefully that doesn't offend anybody just to talk about the realities of what's going on. Brody had a, a, a similar question for me as well. Um, basically, why don't teams in the NFL fire sale? Like, wh why don't teams just ship everybody off? You know what I mean? Um, and... My apologies, that question was from Brian Ernst. That was from Brian Ernst. My apologies, Brian. Wanted to make sure I got your uh, got your name right there. But for me, Brian, th the reason is, is twofold. One, like I just was explaining with the Titans, not every fan base has a diehard fan, uh, fan group that is going to financially support them to the max at all times, no matter what. So a lot of teams can't afford to do that. 
because they'll alienate their fan base and it could hurt their bottom dollar. I think the all the other aspect here is things happen quickly in the NFL. You can go from bad to great really quick. I mean, Jacksonville had the number one overall pick, and in a couple of years, they won the division and won a playoff game. So the reason that teams don't fire sale like they do in the NBA or maybe the MLB is because it's a lot easier. <laughs> excuse me. It's a lot easier to get good in the NFL. So you don't want to get rid of Derrick Henry. You don't want to get rid of Hopkins. You don't want to get rid of Kevin Byard because, hey, Will Levis comes in, you add some guys in free agency, and next year, you're good all of a sudden. You're back to being good. How realistic it is, I don't know, but it is realistic that bad teams turn into good teams overnight in the NFL. So I think that is a big reason why teams don't fire sale. And David Brown says, uh, um, well, the, the Titans tank. Uh, like the Reds. I'm a big Reds fan. David, also a big Reds fan. And that's what I was just explaining, David. You can't just trade all your veterans for young prospects um, and draft picks in the NFL because you go from bad to good overnight. So it just doesn't make sense to pillage your roster all the time. That, that, that's basically what it comes down to there. Um, che Breezy says, and I think this is interesting, is it time for Miss Amy to step in and start forcing Coach Vrabel to make outside hires for his coaching staff? I'll give grades to the coaching staff, but I just don't think that the coaching staff is doing a terrible job. The roster is not good, guys. The, the roster is not good, you know? I, I Like, people are all mad at Tim Kelly in my comments all the time. I think Tim Kelly's doing a pretty good job. Most of the problems the Titans have when I watch the film is execution. So, I think Kelly's done a good job. Uh, Freddie Barnes' question is similar. He says, at what point in the season do you think Amy Adams Strunk steps in to make drastic change if it gets really bad? She's not going to. Mike Vrabel told her last year when they fired John Robinson, this roster is terrible. I can't win with this roster. We need a new GM to build a new roster because this is bad. And when he sold her that dream, he didn't say, hey, give me one off season with a new GM and everything will be right again. So I just don't see Vrabel on the hot seat or big changes coming anytime soon this year. Next year, after next year, Maybe, but not right now. And similar question here. Like I said, a lot of questions about, you know, the future of the team. Mike Vrabel, top Titans fan says, do you think Vrabel survives after this season considering that GMs like to bring in guys that they're familiar with? Look, guys, this is not your normal setup that you're thinking of where uh, Rand Carthon is Mike Vrabel's boss. The GM is over the coach. Mike Vrabel picked Rand Carthon. Rand Carthon has said multiple times in public, in the media, I am here to pick the players that Mike Vrabel wants. So, no. Rand Carthon isn't going to get to fire Mike Vrabel and hire his own guy anytime soon. Because Rand Carthon is Vrabel's guy. If if Mike Vrabel gets fired, Rand Carthon probably would go with him uh, in a couple of years. But 2-2-2-2-2, two, 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 uh, you know who you are. You got a bunch of twos. Uh, is it possible that Vrabel isn't willing to prioritize the future because he's concerned with his own future, if the season totally collapses or he is concerned about losing the locker room, I think that's fair. Yeah, it's probably both of them. Doesn't want to lose the veterans in the locker room and have his message fall on deaf ears because once he does that, then his future will definitely come into question. So 100% there. Last thing here, uh, wanted to have a, a fun question. Take Factory. If Henry is traded before the deadline, where will he stand on your Titans, Mount Rushmore running backs? For me... I would have to go second behind Eddie George. George went to a uh, Super Bowl. He's the leading rusher in franchise history. I would give Derrick Henry second, but I'm going to go with Eddie George at number one. But why isn't this season's two and four like 2009's two and four? We're going to talk about that to cap off today's show, a mailbag edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Before we get into it, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy, guys. I love Prize Picks. It's a lot simpler and easier to play than other daily fantasy sports. And you don't have to go up against a bunch of bots, a bunch of sharks, a thousand lineups from a bot, all of that stuff. It's just you against the Prize Picks projection. So here's what happens Prize Picks has a projection for every player. Examples Derrick Henry, 70 rushing yards, Patrick Mahomes. 250 passing yards, uh, Derek Carr, two interceptions, blah, blah, blah. All you do is pick two to six players and say whether that player is going to do more or less 
than the prize picks projection. And if you win, you can get up to 25 times your money again. Just two to six players, more or less than the projection. And you can do your lineup in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. So make sure that you go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use that code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. Titans fans, we are going to continue today's edition of the Locked on Titans podcast. Mailbag episode answering your guys' questions. Thank you all so much for throwing in your questions for me. I do appreciate it. And, of course, thank you for making the Locked on Titans podcast your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday, Tennessee Titans content all year round, always for free. Make sure you get subscribed, stay subscribed to your team every day. Diving back into your questions, though, we are going to start with a question from St. Grizzly. And St. Grizzly... Wants to know, I gave out grades. He said, you gave out grades for players, but can we get grades on the coaching staff? Head coach, OC, DC. So for me, uh, head coach, Mike Vrabel, I'm going to give him a C plus. Again, as I was explaining earlier, the biggest problem with this team is not coaching. This is not like last year with Todd Downing. It's execution. The roster is just not great. All right. And Mike Vrabel, I think, is is doing his best. He's trying his best. I know we're frustrated with some of the things, but he's trying to win. The only thing I'll downgrade him on is, again, he's trying to win. He's trying to eke out as many wins as possible with this roster, and I think that's only going to hurt the Titans to not commit to So I'll give him a C-plus for that. I don't think that Mike Vrabel is a bad coach. Mike Vrabel is a good football coach. This is a bad roster. I don't know if that's a good fit, if he's the guy to lead the roster out of the problems. Remember, Mike Vrabel took over a team that had just won a playoff game. The idea was Mike Vrabel is going to be a better coach for a good team than Mike Malarkey. But is Mike Vrabel a good coach for a bad team? That I don't know. So we'll see. But I'll give him a C, C plus. Uh, Tim Kelly, a B minus. And uh, Shane Bowen, I think the defense is capable of better. I'm going to give Shane Bowen a C. Uh, Craig Ackerman, a D. When was the last time this, this team's special teams unit was a, a positive factor for him on a weekly basis. It feels like it's been forever. And that is actually a question that Dakota to ever do it. Hilarious name there on Twitter. Said, is it time to move on from Rock uh, Ackerman? Splash plays, blunders on punt return, coverage issues. Yeah, I, I'm 100% with you. Um, whatever your real name is, it's certainly not Dakota to ever do it. Uh, but uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I would like to see them move on from Ackerman. I wanted to see him move on from Ackerman before the season. Uh, next, my guy Rex Green. Rex Green says, and Rex double dips in this episode, cheater. Uh, just kidding, Rex. Thanks. Uh, what's the difference between this and the last time the Titans were two and four? All right, Rex, the simple answer is Marcus Mariota was unable to drive the ball down the field. He had no arm strength. His elbow was busted still from the 2018 nerve damage. He did not have arm strength. He could not drive the ball down the field. With the type of offense the Titans needed to run, they needed to be able to drive the ball down the field, throw it deep. Ryan Tannehill's highest average depth of target of his entire career was 2019 when he came in. It was like 10 yards, 10.1, I believe. That's insane, all right? That would be like, top two in the NFL right now, like top two every year in the NFL. That was astronomical. So Marcus couldn't drive the ball downfield. So when you put in a quarterback with a skill set that fit better with what the team was trying to do, that made a huge difference. That quarterback ain't walking through the door. Malik or Will Levis is not the upgrade at quarterback over Tannehill that Tannehill was over Marcus. So that's not happening. Also, the 2019 team was just better. It was just a much better roster of players. Think about the offensive line. Think about the wide receivers. John U. Smith, prime Derrick Henry, who's a better player than he is right now. Derrick Henry's not a bad player, guys. Don't freak, but I'm just saying. His prime. This team is not as talented as 2019, and an upgrade at quarterback is not walking through the door. 
and neither is Arthur Smith to coordinate the offense. I think Tim Kelly's done a good job, but Tim Kelly ain't getting a head coaching job off how good he is at coordinating offense. And they don't have the players to be that good anyways. So that's why it's not 2019, Rex. Um, FBA, YP, uh, YL uh, had some trade ideas that he wanted to, th- to throw out at me. So I'll go over those. Henry to the Rams for a third. I would take that. Uh, Fulton to the Eagles for a fifth. I would take that. Byard to the Eagles for a third. No one's offering a third for Kevin Byard, but I would take that. Tannehill to the Cowboys for a sixth. They traded for Trey Lance. They're not, and why would they do that? Dak is better than Ryan Tannehill anyways. So they're not doing that. But yeah, I, I would take a couple of those, but I got to be honest with the FBA. Um, they, they ain't getting those offers. They ain't getting those picks for those players. That That's the real issue here. Uh, next, we have um, Brandon. Brandon, uh, Nwo, Nwo KJ. Brandon Nwo KJ. Brandon, hit me up in the DMs. Let me know if I said that right. It's a challenge for me to pronounce names right. Brandon Nwo KJ. Uh, What are your thoughts on Traylon Burks? Traylon Burks is not a number one cornerback. He's not a first round, or uh, not a number one wide receiver. He's not a first round wide receiver. The Titans at this point can only hope that he could be Corey Davis. I mean, that's what you're hoping for. I mean, that's one of the worst trades in NFL history. A.J. Brown is an absolute freak stud. Probably going to be an all-time wide receiver. And, um, yeah, that was a dumb trade. Burks ain't that guy. And my big thing is Burks was expected to be a yards-after-catch guy. But you think about it, you go back and look at his college tape. It was a lot of screens and a lot of stuff where he was, like, untouched. And he would just run faster and outrun everybody in the end zone and made people think he was a yards-after-catch guy. He can't break a tackle to save his life. Um, Anyways, uh, Miles Miles said, uh, what direction do you think we should attack in the first round of the draft? Quarterback, O-line, receiver, corner. Obviously, it depends on how the season ends, but right now it's all about the offensive line for me. Um, bring me bring me Joe Alt. Bring me Olaf Ashanu. Uh, if they drop a little later, there are other options that are going to be available as well. So bring me offensive line. I mean, if they can get Caleb Williams or Drake May. And like, like that's the thing. If they, if they play... If they play Will Levis or Malik Willis the rest of the way and they're both bad and they can get Drake May or, or Drake May or Caleb Williams, then you do that. And I would say quarterback, but I just don't think that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to say offensive line. Uh, Ike, similar question. What draft spots do we have this year? If we can trade off a couple guys before the deadline, who and for what? Uh, I talked about that this week. I'd trade Hopkins. I'd trade Henry. Uh, I'd look to trade uh, Danico Autry. If you could, if you can get proper value, not just trade them for anything, but if you can get proper value. Draft spots, the Titans have a first, a second, a fourth, and three sevenths. Not very good. Um, let me see. Colin, Colin said, uh, why do we suck? Uh, uh, Colin, I've been talking about that for years and years, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I get your frustration, though. I really do, Colin. Uh, Dan talks about some free agent moves. Uh, with the Titans having a ton of cap space to play with next year, which moves would you like to see them make? I talked about it. I want to see T. Higgins signed at wide receiver. I want to see the Titans add uh, cost-controlled veterans on the uh, at like right tackle. Rex asked if the Titans should draft a free agent re- left tackle, right tackle. I'd like to see a right tackle and a left tackle added to this team, one in the draft and one in free agency. I want both. You know what I mean? I want both. Uh, I'd like to see him go sign T. Higgins, though, in free agency to add at wide receiver. T. Higgins, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks as your top three. That's a real NFL wide receiver core that I think could do damage. Um, Let me see here. Um, Logan. See, Logan had to say this. Um, Logan, can't find your question now, but I put offensive tackle. Uh, and I know you asked about NPF um, and where he should play next year. You can play NPF back at right tackle. It was about playing NPF over Hubbard because Hubbard is a veteran. Um, I agree with you, but the problem is, is I would rather try NPF out at left tackle and let Hubbard keep holding down right tackle because if you do it the other way and you put Hubbard back in at right tackle, and then you put Dillard back in at left tackle, or you put MPF back in at right tackle and uh, Dillard back in at left tackle, the offensive line gets significantly worse. So that's how I would handle that. Um, D-Pink says, 
I remember being wrong about Dupree signing. Hey, well, thanks for admitting that. He says, but I want to know your thoughts on Arden Key. Arden Key is a rotational edge rusher. I think he can be the best third edge rusher in the NFL, but asking him to be a starter and asking him to play full games and keep up his energy level throughout an entire game and in run defense and all that, I just don't... They're asking Arden Key to be a starter, and I think he's more of a rotational guy. Uh, A high-end rotational guy, but a a rotational guy nonetheless. Uh, Mario asked, um, are you as terrified as I am to watch this team play the Texans in Houston wearing the throwbacks? It'd be the most Titans thing to do to get blown out. Well, Mario, I can tell you this. Luckily, the Titans aren't playing the Texans in Houston when they wear the throwbacks. They're going to be playing in Tennessee for that. So you could be a a, a little less worried is what I'll say. Um, Heart Attack Hog says, what's your top scary movie and why is it the Titans offense? What's the prime target in next year's draft? Um, I don't like scary movies. Anything that makes you scared voluntarily, haunted trails, haunted houses, horror movies, um, like American Horror Story on TV, stuff like that. And I don't, I'm not watching that. I watch sports. Um, I watch superhero movies and I watch nature documentaries. And I don't, I, I'm totally out on being scared intentionally. I get enough of that when I watch the Titans film multiple times each week. Um, let me see. Cody Weath has multiple questions here. What are your thoughts on all the interesting info about picking his team? and what? So Caleb Williams, the quarterback from USC, wants partial ownership in whatever team he gets drafted by. That is so narcissistic and arrogant. That's insane. He's That's not happening. Um, when Titans players go to other teams like uh, Nate Davis, uh, A.J. Brown, um, do you root for them to succeed? Or, uh, John o. Smith, or are you kind of hoping they never flourish with their new squad? I gotta tell you guys, I'm petty. And it really depends on how they left with the Titans. Like, AJ, I root for AJ to succeed. Because the Titans screwed that up. AJ didn't just leave them. The Titans screwed that all up. Now, I didn't want AJ to win the Super Bowl, though. I'm glad he's doing well. But the Super Bowl, that's a little too much for me to handle there. Um, other players where the Titans voluntarily, um, or where the players seem to, like David Long, and the Titans didn't have a good, I guess it depends on what my position is, because I don't think that the Titans should have paid David Long. He's a replaceable linebacker, no big deal. So do I want him to ball out and make me look stupid? No, I don't. So I don't root for him to do well, you know what I mean? Jonu Smith. I said that John U. Smith was incredibly overrated. The Titans should not have come anywhere close to the $12 million a year that the Patriots paid him. So do I want John U. Smith to go to the Patriots and be amazing and make me look stupid? No. I want to be right because I think I'm right. You know what I mean? So uh, when it comes to stuff like that, you know, with the Titans, I want to be wrong because it means the Titans win. But if it's something like that, you know, it kind of depends on how I feel about the player. That's That's my... True answer. I'll admit. It just depends on how I feel about the player. Um, Let me see. Last questions here. Um, Haunted House said, um, besides trading off guys, who should the Titans trade for? Uh, Hunter Thorpe. Listen, I don't want the Titans to trade for anyone. I talked about their draft picks earlier. They don't have enough draft picks to be able to afford to trade for anyone. Like, you know, that's, and then, um, Jerry Bird on YouTube said what killed the Titans. And to me, what killed the Titans was two bad drafts from John Robinson in 2021 and 2022. He didn't think that he had the depth on the team to be able to pay AJ Brown. So he let AJ go. And that was the nail in the coffin. So the bad drafts from John Robinson in 2021 and 2020, um, they, they were what really killed this version of the Titans. But that's going to do it for me today, folks. This was a super long episode. Locked on executives already banging at my door, ready to take me out. So um, with that being said, that's going to do it for me today, folks. As always, I am your host, Tyler Rowland, and the intro is all chopped and screwed. So this was Locked on Titans.